Wake up and be amazing. Grab your daily Danish. Hey, I'm Trainer Dane, dreamer, believer, and doer. I want to come to you. I am an avid reader, podcast listener, content creator, and I just wanted to share a few things with you today. Before I became a partner trainer with Camp Gladiator, and actually many years before that, I was a middle school and a high school teacher. So I love to teach. I've always taught or been a teacher without even realizing I was a teacher. So really quickly, really quickly as we jump in here today, oh, well, that's not good if you cover the camera apparently, is it? Let me get back on there. That was an epic fail on my part. So sometimes even when you teach, it's not perfect, but you live and learn. The world is for triers and that's where we are. So if you're joining me live, please hit hashtag live. And one of the questions I wanna ask you today is what do you do to make yourself more successful. So I was reading and I read that five things. It was actually more than five things. I picked out what I thought were the five most important things, they're all important, that successful people do. And this is in no particular order, but five things that successful people do. And one of them that I found out that I do, and I do every day, most days at least, I read for pleasure. One of my 2020 goals, I would love to know one of your 2020 goals. Did you make goals? Did you write goals? But one of my goals is to read 10 pages a day, every single day. I just finished, uh, let's see, my oh, a 10 day challenge with myself to read 10 pages every day where I'm actually recording that I'm, I'm getting up every day or in the afternoon, it hasn't always been in the morning. On the weekends, I don't necessarily get up and do it in the morning. I'm trying to find something here. Um, but I've been reading, I finished one book already, I'm on my second book, but successful people read. I was told a long time ago, just reiterates what this article said, was that if you're not reading, you're gonna get left behind. It, it can be fiction, it can be personal development, it can be leadership, it can be a romance novel, but we need to be reading. And it, whether it's on your Kindle, I personally like to read a real book and maybe it's because I'm old school, I'm about to have another birthday in a couple of weeks but I read for pleasure. I'm currently reading a book by Ryan Hall who has the fastest time for half marathon by American, by the way, which is under an hour, 59 minutes and change. It's crazy fast, crazy fast. But it's called Run the Mile You're In, Find God with Every Step. I find it fascinating to hear he interweaves his story, his um, journey with God and faith. But if you've ever run a long distance, again, I guarantee, I believe even if you're an atheist at one time, you're going to ask for help and ask for guidance and whatever the being is, that is. So do you read for pleasure? And if you're reading now, I would love to know what you're reading. It's really important. So I was talking to somebody the other day and I said, I'd really like to know what you're reading. And the gentleman I was sitting with, who I kind of use as my business mentor, he had said, you should ask the people that you work with what they're reading. So you can learn to know them a little bit better. I thought that's flipping genius. So please share a book you're currently reading or a book you've shared a lot. One of the books I've shared a lot with people is You Are a Badass by Jed Sincero. I think it's a, an excellent personal development book. It's She swears all the time. So it's not all, and for me, I don't need all the fluff and feathers and candles and incense. I just wanna know what can I do to believe in myself more that empower you to do the same thing. So successful people read for pleasure. Now, although you're on some sort of technology now, whether it's your smartphone, your PC, maybe a tablet, but they disconnect from technology. Have you noticed this? I know, I don't know about an Android because I have an iPhone, but every week I get a report that tells me my average use of technology. And sometimes it's up, sometimes it's down. I always justify the amount of time because I do use it, right? I connect with you guys on my phone. I'm not on my phone now, I'm on my PC. Um, but they disconnect from technology. One of the things we really are working on in my home is that once we turn off the television living room or we say good night, that that's it. We're not gonna send a text, we're not gonna scroll on Facebook, we're not gonna let it, let's look at something on Instagram. Disconnect from the technology and let your brain disconnect from all of that, right? It's designed to capture you, to keep you scrolling. And if you're on Facebook and there's ads, they're going to have some kind of ad that tried to capture you, make you stop and read and click 
and eventually buy something. Do you, are you disconnecting from technology? I will tell you, when I go out to eat or at dinner, sitting at dinner, we don't have our cell phones with us. It was something that I didn't really want to do. Um, I figure I want to be with that group of people. I highly recommend it. Rick Pitino, um, college basketball, pro basketball coach, said that when they go out to eat, that the first person to pick up their phone has to pick up the tab. I love it. Would you try it? Have you tried it? Do you disconnect? I'm not passing judgment. I'm just asking. These are things through research that they're saying successful people do. They disconnect from technology. When was the last time you connected with your loved ones? I would add friends. Are you connecting with loved ones and friends outside? Your friends can be from work. Um, maybe your loved ones are from work. I worked with my family for almost 10 years. Are you connecting with those people that are important to you? Are you building a deeper relationship than what you see when you scroll on Facebook or you scroll on whatever social media platform that you're doing? I'm asking, do you do that? I don't, again, I don't have any idea, but the successful people are building deeper, healthier relationships with those they love. So are you doing that? That's a, a question I have for you is, are you just send it? You could even send a text thought of you today. Thought of you today. Thought of you today. Yeah. So Elizabeth says she loved your badass. I have read it numerous times. I've listened to it numerous times going back to when you're reading. So the platform I use doesn't always let me see your um, comment. So it finally let me check on Facebook. Facebook. Yeah. Thank you so much. So anybody out there, Elizabeth said that she has read or recommends conscious leadership, stealing fire, becoming supernatural. I haven't heard of any of them, but I'm going to look. I am a personal development junkie um, and I'm going to continue to read in, the, in that genre, but I want to get out of that genre too, from biographies um, to leadership to all kinds of different things. Right? So one of the things that I had said um, uh, before is that connecting with loved ones or friends. Look, what if you sent one text, one, to somebody every day that said, hey, I'm just thinking of you. Hope you're having an amazing day. No, without anything in return, looking for nothing in return. How could that change somebody's day? What if you received a text that said, hey, Tanya, Elizabeth, Joseph, whatever your name is, I would never put whatever your name is, and it just said, hey, I'm thinking of you. Hope you're having a great day. Let's connect soon. Wouldn't that make you smile? Wouldn't that make you smile? Um, absolutely. Are you telling me to facilitate personal development workshops, Elizabeth? I would love that. That's a really good idea. I, I, I mean, I love it. And I can, I can I, whenever I give a quote um, from Malcolm Gladwell or Stephen Covey or I'm not a big Tony Robbins guy, but there's other people, I always say, I can pee you, PD you to death. I love it. Um, I was a athlete. I've been a coach. I've got sayings. I've got beliefs. I have my own Danish. You know, you're going to wake up and be amazing. Every day is a great day. So abs absolutely. Do you, and I challenge you today, I would love you if you have to pause and come back and hit replay later to stop now, send a text to somebody you're thinking of, say, just think, oh, that's your job. That's awesome. We need to connect. Um, Elizabeth, tell somebody that you care about them or that you're thinking about them to today. Today, what do you do? Tell them. Are you preparing for the next day? When, before you go to bed, before you lay your head on the pillow, are you prepared for the next day? So some of the things we do, um, I try to make sure there's no dishes in the sink every night. I make the coffee every night. I make sure that I have all of my gear in the car every night, ready to go for my next camp. I have my book laid out. I have, those are just things how I start my morning. So I prepare for the day. I know what my workouts are going to be for the day. I know what my expectations for the workouts are going to be for the day. I use Google Calendar. So I come home and I can sit in my office or I can go to a coffee shop and I know what I need to do. Do I need to send a text to X number of campers? Do I need to connect with somebody who I haven't seen for a long time? What is it going to be so that I can pre prepare the day? It doesn't have to be perfect. But what it is is you have to have a plan. And sometimes things happen and you've just got to roll with that. So be flexible in your day, but do your prepare for the day. Do you use a planner? This is my quarterly planner. So I'm trying to do a little bit of uh, using my Google calendar and a quarterly planner where I can write 
always the problem for me with planners is they never give me enough space to write. I guess I don't write micro small or a font of less than eight point. But what I'm asking you is, do you prepare for the day? And if you don't do any of these, you do some of these, maybe you can add one. Maybe you can add one. I've been teaching quickly. If you're here live, you have a comment or something to say, like Elizabeth, I had no idea your job was to facilitate personal development. So I learned something new every day. Sometimes you have to call it audible. Exactly. That's a really good football reference. Kudos to you, Tanya, for saying you have to call it audible. Sometimes you have to do that. Sometimes you have to do that. But what are you doing to make yourself better? So in a, on Facebook with followers and campers and champions, you'll, you may have seen or maybe you haven't that I've been teaching 10, 10, 5 rule set or goal setting or challenge setting. 10, 10, 5, 10 days, 10 months, 5 years. Work backwards. 5 years to dream on, 10 months to work on, 10 days to take action. Can you take one of the five things and I'm going to review them that I've been telling you that successful people are known to do. Can you add one of them for the next 10 days? And how could that change your perspective on what you do, what you do? Here's one that I think probably has the most impact on everything that you do, everything that you do. You can call it attitude of gratitude, but an article that I just copied and pasted it, it says they reflect on positive moments of the day. One of the things I was taught when I worked for the hospital and I was the head of the wellness center was we would do what we call rounding. So we'd go talk to our staff. We'd go talk to our um, peers outside of our office. And the first thing you would do is ask them to share a win for the day. And it's a different perspective because most of us can tell us what's crappy. Exactly. A gratitude journal. Super smart. What I like about that, Brian Buffini, who I love his podcast. If you're not listening to it, I highly recommend Brian Buffini's podcast um, is to journal so you can go back and reflect really and see how far you've come. What you're thinking today on this January day in 2020 will not be exactly the same thing you think of or think about on January 20, 2021. And also every moment of the day didn't suck. But maybe that's the part that you remember, unfortunately. For example, I have not been a middle school or high school coach since 2006. So now going on, what, 14 years? It'll be 14 years this summer. But to this day, I can tell you a handful of games that I was the coach and we got freaking hammered, crushed. And it just kind of took a little part of our soul on that day. But the beauty of athletics is you get to lace them up and do it again another day. And it's unfortunate that I don't remember all the wins. And we had more wins than losses, but those are the ones, unfortunately, I remember. I was in a different time, even in my own gratitude and personal development 14 years ago than I am today. So if I was a middle school, high school, college coach today, I might remember the victories more than the defeats. Now, it's what happens in between us from practice and the kids and those kind of things that's more important. But do you reflect on the day? Could you sit on the edge of your bed with your gratitude journal or your mental journal and think of one or more things that went well, what could it be? How much better would you sleep if you thought, you know what? I'm so glad I reached out to John today and said, hey, John, just thinking of you today. And he responded, thanks, man. Really appreciated it and I needed that today. How could you impact that life? How could you impact that life? So quickly, or not so quickly, I'm gonna just review in a, probably a different order than I did at the beginning of the video, five things that successful people do every day. You know the one thing that's not on this list that I have read, I'm gonna add it. So consider this your bonus um, piece for six things that successful people do every day, every day. Drum roll please, understand it's exactly what I do, and what I lead, on a daily basis, and that is exercise. So they exercise every day. Now, understand, it doesn't have to be formal exercise, meaning I want you and love you and invite you to be a camper at any of our locations with Camp Gladiator. Gladiator. And if you're in New Braunfels and Seguin, I'd love you to come meet our Team 830. But whether it's walking the dog, right? Whether it's getting on a, a Peloton bike, whether it's jumping rope, 
whether it's plugging in and watching a yoga video, but they're exercising every day. And most of them actually in the research will do it in the morning. So what are you doing? It does not have to be high intensity. It doesn't have to be long duration. What it has to be is B. One of the videos and one of the things that I really like and have coached for years, can you limit your sitting to 23 and a half hours a day? Let me repeat that. Can you limit your sitting to 23 and a half hours a day? So my challenge is to get up most days of the week and move your body purposefully for at least 30 minutes. I'm going to take a drink. Cheers. If you have water, please take a drink of water. So five plus a bonus things that successful people do every day. They prepare for the next day. What is your routine at the end of the night to get ready for tomorrow? What is it? Have you, will you, and do you connect with your friends and loved ones? Again, that's in a judgment zone. I'm just asking if you do it. If you were here earlier in the video, I challenged you today. And I would love you to come back and just say, did it, did it did it just once. You don't have to say it once. I want you to send a text or make a phone call and drop their first name in it and say, Hey, just thinking of you today. Hope you're having an amazing, wonderful day or whatever your word is or words are, but let somebody know you're thinking about them. It will change their day and they respond. It'll change your day too. Are you reading for pleasure? I said earlier, my challenge, my goal, one of my 20 of 2020 goals, I need to go live and share my 20 goals. I'll share all of them with you is to read a minimum of 10 pages a day, every single day. That includes Saturday. That includes Sundays. That includes holidays and vacations. That includes vacations, trips with Tanya. I'm going to take a book. I'm going to take a book and I'm going to read for 10 pages every day. That adds up to a total of a minimum of 3,650 pages this year. Do the math. That's approximately 2,200 page books. How will that change my insight, my personal development that I can then give to you and spin it out as Danish? Successful people disconnect from technology. Are you taking this thing that is truly a computer that just happens to make phone calls? And I always say that I think it's the worst thing that iPhone does is make a phone call. Um, it tends to drop the calls or it's static or whatever, but instantly you can go on Google. You can look anything up that you want to do. You can connect. I can be on my phone get, doing a live video right here talking globally. Be amazing. But are you taking time to disconnect? Here's my challenge. When you go out to eat breakfast, lunch, dinner, or snack with a friend or friends, put your phone away. Now, if you're on call, that's a different story. And that's something that happens in my house. So sometimes that's a different story. But then make a, a bet or a deal that the first one that answers their phone or picks it up at the table, picks up the tab, picks up the tab. I absolutely love that. That is not mine. That is Rick Pitino that said that, or at least I heard it from him. Have an attitude of gratitude. Reflect on the positive moments of your day that will then lead into a better day tomorrow as you prepare for the next day. What did you do well? So even this morning, I thought our camps were great. Um, campers worked hard. I got high fives. We sat, we went on a CZ social. I got to sit and see people all dolled up with makeup, um, all cleaned up, not all sweaty. I'm still all sweaty from the camps, from the social to my run, but you can't smell me because this ain't smell of vision, but I'll reflect on that at the end of the day. I've got two more camps this afternoon. I'm going to give multiple high fives. The camp should be big and there's going to be great energy. And I feed off that energy and I hope the campers do too. So that will be something that I'll reflect on tonight at a positive moment and get ready for tomorrow. So I'd love, here's what I'd love to hear. And I, this is a banner I'm going to write right here. I get through it. So I said that successful people read. If you don't read, in my opinion, and what I was told by a former CEO is you're going to get left behind. I would love to add to my reading list. The two books I, well, the book I've read, um, let's see if I have it. First book I read was called Holding On to Hope, Rowan's Story by Carrie Windham. She's a friend and a camper. It is a story about the 10 years, the 3,797 days she got to spend with her amazing son, who one of his quotes, and the quote I'll remember from the book 
is to love your life. So I read that book and it was a different piece for me reading Rowan's journey and his mom's journey um, because I know the author and what an amazing human being she is. So I had a personal investment in that book. She also gets you, this was a Christmas gift that she gave me. Um, the next one was Run the Mile You're In by Ryan Hall. Find God in Every Step. That's my next book. She gifted it to me, gifted it to me, knew I had heard about it on a podcast, thought I'd like to read that book. I'm a hundred and something pages in. Um, but I need to know what's next. I would love to know what personal development books, what leadership books, what fiction, nonfiction, biographies, whatever it is that you're reading so that I can pick one on a week and I can get to learn a little bit more about you. What a great way to connect, I believe, by reading the same thing a friend, colleague connection is. All right, humans, I want to thank you for your time today. I value time and here's it's not a renewable resource. So when you invest, and now it's a little over 21 minutes, I want to give you a big virtual hug a high five and a smile. I'll tell you, I really appreciate the fact that you tuned in, you listened. And if there's somebody out there that might like this message, please share it. That's how we can make the world a better place. Go out today, change the world with high five, smiles and handshakes, and be successful today. Bye now.